Just does How the Gig Geezers Hustle continue? Find out on this special segment. It's Monday, March 21st, 2022. It is the first day of the Gig Geezers Work Week. I just got finished putting money in the tank and hopefully this tank will last me through at least Wednesday, March 21st, or at least through tomorrow evening, March 22nd, if I am smart with how I manage my tanks and manage my hustles. You are coming along with me with this ride along because my goal is, of course, to hit $200 today. But the significance, if I hit $200 a day, which would be a typical gig user day, is that it will be for the 40th consecutive day. I would challenge anyone in most markets to try to do that. Make $200 in a single day, 40 consecutive days. Now, let me qualify this by saying that um, I have put in some half-day hustles, and there there is a day where I didn't go out at all. But this is based on days in which I went out and put in a first half and a second half hustle, meaning that I've been out there anywhere between six to eight hours in the, in the day. So um, I'm coming off a week in which I made $1,507.76. Um, I put in seven days last week and in about, and that was accomplished in about 42 hours. And so I just started out by accepting a Instacart for $17.94, 15 items from a Kroger. The drop-off address is probably about 10 minutes from the store. And so that's how we're gonna start it out. Now, is this most desirable? No. My desire would have been to um, venture down towards the, uh, the downtown area. But if you've checked out any recent segments of the Gig Geezer, I've also said sometimes you have to follow the money. And this is where the money is leading me. And so we'll see what happens. Okay, we've left Kroger. And Kroger, fortunately, was a more um, amenable experience in that um, this customer had a lot of frozen items. And I was able to find all but one of the items. So I only had to refund one item. Uh, usually at three of the four Kroger locations in the Columbia metropolitan area, if you have a lot of frozen items, you can expect to have a lot of refunds or have to go through a lot of substitutions because their frozen section and dairy sections are often decimated. I don't know what it is about Kroger, but it's just like that. But while I was inside Kroger, I got a, I accepted a Grubhub from Top Dog Tavern and that is for $18.02 and I'm about to go over there now and hopefully that order is ready. It's early in the day, it's midday, there should be no excuse, but this is this place is notorious for being slow. Now let's get you up to date. I've got an instant card order that I'm heading to uh, drop off. I've also picked up the Top Dog Tavern order and upon leaving Top Dog Tavern, I kind of debated on this one, but I decided to go ahead and accept a Uber Eats order from McAllister's for $10.99. Now, the, 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 now, the Uber Eats order actually takes me back in the opposite direction and in the direction where I want to go. But from a um, delivery standpoint, it may not be the most advisable thing because of knowing where I have to go to drop off these first two orders, uh, that being Instacart and uh, Grubhub. But... I'm thinking though that what I'm doing is I'm taking a gamble on buying myself time from a money standpoint because these first three orders, now uh, Instacart is going to pay about $17 with the missing, with the refunded item. Grubhub, I'm guaranteed to make $18.02, I'm at $35. And then with Uber Eats in hand, and if I get the entire amount, $10.99, I'm at $45 in the first hour. Now that gives me a chance to get back in a position where I would like to be and make additional monies during this first half hustle. That's really the whole, that's really the whole um, strategy behind it. It's not, again, this is not some exact science. Um, there is really no, I want to say there's really no right way or wrong way of doing things. Sometimes you have to do things that you feel that is best for you, and that's what I'm doing. Since I last uh, 
checked in with y'all um, I have since dropped off the Uber Eats order which was not a problem I delivered to that guy before so um, I'm I'm guessing that that order should pay $10.99 in fact there's not been a lot going on not a lot of orders I've seen come across and so I took a chance on accepting a point pickup order at Walmart uh, point pickup has started to take on a lot of general merchandise uh, third third party last mile pickups instead of roadie and so this one is for $13.72 it is actually going to take me back up in a part of uh, the metropolitan area that I just left but um we'll see what happens um I know that with pick point pickup I'm not going to see the money today I'll see it at some point during the month I think they pay twice a month this is the first point pickup order that I have um, attempted and completed um, in several months now. But this is one of those gig gig this is one of those gig options that you keep in hand for times like this. After about a 10 minute wait, I am now heading in the direction of the drop off location for this point pickup order. This order is supposed to pay $13.72. And uh, at the rate things are going right now, it was probably a good decision um, accepting the point pickup order and taking the chance on that U-Breeds order because the vibe that I have felt since I started today, this first half hustle is gonna be a challenge. I'm in a position right now, where I'm at a point right now, two hours into this hustle, where I need three, maybe four more orders, hopefully between now and 3.30, so that'd be about an hour and 45 minutes from now. Um, in order to put myself in a position, making it close for this first half hustle to reach the goal of $200. And I will say that if I, if I reach $200 today, I will have earned it because these are the type of days that um, in sports they say, these are the type of days where it tests the mettle of a champion. You find out whether you got champion traits in you or you don't. And so a champion is going to... Um, a champion's going to do everything they can to try to make something happen, and that's what I'm. That's what I'm looking to do today. Alrighty, well we got that one dropped off and update on things. The Instacart order, come to find out, paid $18. The, cust the customer uh, changed the tip total on that order and so it brought it up from $16.76 to $18. All together, adding the $13.72, um, the gig geezer is now at $60.73, just over two hours. Um, like I said, I'm still in a lot of trouble right now. Uh, I need three orders in the next hour and a half to put myself in any kind of position to say that I've made it close for the first half hustle. Okay, it appears about 20 minutes have passed since I last checked in with y'all, and I just got a little bit of a flurry of opportunities. It, that seems to be what happens. You get one and then, every, then things start coming your way. Well, first thing, I caught an Instacart from Sam's coming back out here to the Northeast sector for $15, eight items. Um, if memory serves me correct, I believe I have delivered to this person before. Um, right after that, I accept. Right after that, I accepted a Grubhub for $8.50 um, to this uh, restaurant that I'm, I'm heading to now to pick up because the drop-off location is literally right down from right down the road from the restaurant, and from there about 10, 12 minutes from Sam's. And uh, I've dropped off to that person multiple occasions as well. And if the Instacart order holds up for 15, or maybe even better, depending on how things go, in addition to the 850, that's gonna put the gig geezer at over $85 for the first half hustle in a, in a little under three hours. Now also, I've got as a placeholder right now, a roadie pickup from Walmart for $13.77. Um, I'm calling it a placeholder because I don't think I'm going to drive down there to pick that one up, 
but it's just nice to have for the next 20 minutes or so and we'll see what happens um, more than likely I'll be looking for another order from out this way to kind of fill up that void and that will put me hopefully over $90 and that would be close uh, in my book and I've shown before what I feel is close anything between um, anything between 85 and 99 dollars is close uh, saving face is 75 to 84 dollars anything below 75 solid a solid hustle is between 125 and 149 and a strong hustle is 150 and above okay the grubhub order is dropped off that order actually paid eight dollars and fifty six cents bringing my grub up total for this first half hustle to twenty six dollars and fifty eight cents now we're at the light we're about to turn off and head into the sam's parking lot to complete this instacart order which is offering fifteen dollars now to bring you up to date on the monies now come to find out the uber eats order that i dropped off early on it offered ten dollars ninety nine cent it paid twelve dollars ninety two cent um as i mentioned the the instacart order it appeared it was going to pay 1676 the customer was nice enough to increase the tip to where it paid 18 dollars and there's the point pickup order for 1372 and what else that's it so far so we're now at 70 we're actually at 70 dollars and change this instacart order can put us at 85 dollars and change i'm still holding on to the roadie order for 13 dollars and change but if i can get something around here it's gone in fact it's probably going to be gone before i leave uh the sam's parking lot because i've held on to it too long and realistically that's just not the right thing to do um but like i said my intent was to use it as a placeholder just in case you know i may need it this is an example actually of where having multiple options come into play and it keeps you it gives you a chance to achieve your goals i mean i've actually i've been scanning seven apps today roadie point pickup uber eats doordash grubhub instacart and waiter slash bike squad all right let's get you up to date all right i have with me now the instacart order which is offered for 15 dollars before leaving sam's i accepted a doordash order for eight dollars from chick-fil-a now the beauty of this one is that i was able to connect the dots from a geographical standpoint the chick-fil-a order drop-off is actually on the way to the instacart drop-off and it is likely that i'm looking at around 94 dollars for the end of the first half hustle being completed in three and a half hours it's not great not bad but it certainly put makes it certainly is it puts me close to where i need to be in order to accomplish my ultimate goal for today now while i was in sam's or actually while i was in sam's i actually had a couple of other orders to come through on uber eats very tempting in fact uber eats sent it to me four times and the, that was a 17 dollar plus order from red robin which is like uh right down the road from sam's and then there was another one for 1890 and change both of them would have taken me back towards the downtown area that was covering like 17 miles 17 17 18 miles respectively under certain under certain circumstances i would have definitely gone after that order but i just felt from a i just felt that it was not I just felt that it just was not worth my while or time and that's why i passed on those two orders sometimes you have to ask yourself what's what's ten dollars in the greater scheme of things is it really worth it just like sometimes when i have not gone out um, on certain half hustles i had to ask myself what's a hundred dollars in the greater scheme of things and those are some of the questions i ask myself while i'm out here doing the hustle so um i mentioned earlier about how uh champions find a way perhaps i found a way to put myself in a good position with things um i mentioned at one point a, a couple about an hour and a half ago that i needed two to three more orders to put myself in a position uh, for the second half hustle i have done that
Alrighty, you see a few changes here. Right now, I don't have my hat on, I don't have my glasses on, that's because I've yet to start my evening hustle. Also, I have a different colored shirt. The reason for the different colored shirt, as you see in the inset, I had to uh, plug my tire. Uh, the plugging of the tire is a result of a screw that lodged into the tread of my tire. Well, if you recall in the earlier segment of the Gig Geezer, I showed you some things that you can do to help yourself in preparedness of, of um, emergency type situations while you're out during your hustle. And one of the things that I, that I shared was a, a tire plug kit. Um, the tire plug kit is invaluable. I say that word a lot though, but there are a lot of things that are invaluable. And a tire plug kit, if you're able to do it yourself, can save you a lot of money. There are places out there that will try to convince you into buying a brand new tire when you don't need to, when all you need is just a plug. Now, the last time I had someone to plug a tire, I think they charged me $10, maybe $20, but that's money that's that you can save. Of course, when they start talking about a new tire, now you're talking in upwards of $200, $250 for a tire, not to mention a warranty and whatever labor that they're gonna tack onto it. So, um, if you're able to do that, invest in a tire plug kit or tire a tire patch kit. And um, while I'm at it, let's get you up to speed with going into the second half hustle money wise. The first half hustle officially was $108.94. That's broken down into uh, DoorDash was $8. Grubhub was $26.58. Uh, Instacart was $32.72. Um, Uber Eats was $12.92, and I'm missing one here. Uh, Point Pickup was $13.72, and that was before um, DoorDash's uh, fuel assistance money came in today, as anticipated. I said it would be either today, the 21st, or the 22nd. Well, it came in today under the term Quest, and now I got $15.00. Fifteen dollars is if you if your or if your completed deliveries um, amassed more than two hundred twenty five miles, you got fifteen dollars. If it's a if it's hundred miles, five dollars. If it's one hundred seventy five miles, ten dollars. So the extra fifteen puts me at one hundred and eight. And so now all it takes is just a typical gig geezer evening hustle, and then we're talking forty consecutive days of having earned two hundred dollars or more when I have completed a full day's hustle. One last one last uh, first half tidbit before we get out there and start accepting orders. Um, I have always mentioned that my goal is to complete anywhere between seven and nine orders. And the first half hustle, I completed what I would say is the minimum, seven orders. And that was broken down into one DoorDash, two Grubhub, two uh, Instacart, uh, one point pickup, and then one Uber Eats. So that's seven. We are about 35 minutes into this second half hustle, and I am just now leaving with the first half of a stacked order from Uber Eats. The gig geezer had to, let's just say, use some, employ some patience, and also a little bit of strategy, maybe a little bit of trickeration. As you see, as you see here in the inset, this was the first decent offer that I had come through. It was a Uber Eats for $17 and change from Sato's restaurant. I also had a couple other possibilities. Um, DoorDash for $10 and change. And so I'm going to let you think which one I took at that moment. Alrighty. I didn't take either. I don't know why, but I didn't take them. <laughs> But then Uber Eats come back with Sato's again. And I took it this time because it was showing for $20.50 50 plus cent. And the mileage, because I was at Sato's, had been cut down by a couple miles. And so it kind of made sense. But by the time I got inside Sato's, I got this stacked from Outback. And so instead of what appeared to be a risky move altogether, now it looks like my first hour is going to be fairly decent in which I can make at least $33. Now, I have shared on a number of occasions that you can't panic, stick to your process. 
and sticking to your process is the things that have gotten you where you are. Uh, order selection, um, you know, patience, uh, not panicking, things like that. And um, in this particular case, while it was not looking good for about 35 minutes, now all of a sudden I've got some things going. Now, what was interesting is that for about 30 of those minutes, I didn't see really anything come through, nothing on all the apps. I mean, also it was a bunch of nothing orders. It didn't matter if it was, it didn't matter if it was Instacart, DoorDash, um, uh, Waiter Slash Bite Squad, even a couple of times that Uber Eats had come through. I initially accepted one for $9.73 at uh, Chick-fil-A, but then it was taking me off where I did not want to go. <laughs> and so I threw that one back. Um, grub up i hadn't seen anything yet so far in the second half hustle so what it also speaks to is the uncertainty of the gig economy gig hustles in general you just don't know when things are going to come through and so um, i can understand why some people would rather take a w-2 because at least they know they got something coming every week or every two weeks or every month depending on how they're paid whereas with gig economy work you don't know when you leave your place whether you're going to make anything worth mentioning or not um you have no you have no true control over the volume of orders that come through um you have no true control over um how much you're going to make in a given week really you can set goals and expectations but that's about it and then you don't know how long it's going to take you to to get there even for someone like me who by most standards have done has done quite well doing gig work um I don't know what I'm going to do. I leave with with the expectation of doing something, but that's really it. I just leave with an expectation. And yeah, I may have a game plan or a strategy, but nothing's guaranteed with that. I mean, I have to make, I, I mean, you the, the strategy is somewhat of a framework, but it's not the exact path you're going to take while you're out there. So that's something to think about while you're out here doing your hustle. Um, I picked up the outback half of the um, of the stacked order, and now um, the good thing about this particular situation um, is that the Ubreed orders actually set up nicely, in that the drop off locations of the two um, orders are within seven to ten minutes of each other. That doesn't happen often. Um, I mean, Ubreed is notorious for sending you 180 degrees in the opposite direction, and then expect you to go out the other way. Well, in this case, uh, I don't have to do that. And that's a good thing. Uh, it would be nice now if I could start connecting the dots. You hear me talk about connecting the dots. And so connecting the dots is if I can um, connect uh, uh, or stack an order from another, another app onto this stacked order. All right, so we've dropped off the um, second half of the Ubreeds order. And so now we're looking at a potential $33. Meanwhile, the gig user has accepted two other orders. Both of them are slightly uh, uncharacteristic, and you may just say outright uncharacteristic. The first one is a stacked. Um, the first one is a stacked Instacart order, uh, twenty-one items showing for twenty-eight dollars and change. Now, typically, pr my preference when it comes to double stacked orders is that um, I'd like to see ideally at least thirty dollars on them. This one is close, the, but then again, the other thing that I like when it comes to um, double stacked orders with Instacart is that they are no more than 40 items. This one has 21, so I'm giving a little bit to take something. Now, the other thing is that I accepted a nine item order on DoorDash. It's offering $6.75. It is asking to take a picture of a hot and cold bag. Now, Lately for me, these hot and cold bag uh, um, orders in which you have to show the catering bag have been pretty much a disappointment. Um, it's almost been exactly what you see is what you're gonna get. I am hoping that is not the case. Um, the only good thing about me accepting this order, and I hope that it actually has more money on it, is that it is on the way to the second Instacart drop-off. The other thing about this first, about this Instacart order is that the first drop-off is literally across the street from this plaza and the pickup for beef or brady's the doordash order is literally across the street as well so now i need to get in and get on out with this instacart order and uh, i'll get back with you all right so 
we have picked up everything and now we're beginning to drop everything off starting with the first um, instacart drop off which is literally across the street from the uh, shopping plaza the next drop off is the doordash the doordash order from this particular spot is probably about seven to ten minutes away that's because of the traffic lights there's a uh, one two three traffic lights that are kind of all bunched together but you got a bunch of bonehead drivers that make things a little more difficult and then from there um the the second instacart drop off is probably about 12 to 15 minutes away now the wild card really is the doordash drop off we're talking nine items we're talking three bags uh no cheap stuff here um it's not a long distance away. Um, you would think that uh, with it also requiring that I take a picture of my catering bag, that this order should pay more than what it's showing. Now, um, I'll just leave it at that. So I'll get back with you once we've dropped off the DoorDash order. The gig geezer took an L on that one just what I was mostly concerned about. Um, the reason why I tend not to take orders less than $8, especially in situations like that, is because um, you set yourself up for disappointment in this market. Um, that's a tricky number, $6, what, 75 cent? You would think that order would pay $10 at a minimum. It paid $7.50, $5 tip. And a person probably, even though, you know, I could care less that the person just moved into a brand new subdivision. I mean, those homes there have been built within the past 16 to 18 months. Um, but needless to say, if I've got some wiggle room on DoorDash or any app and I see that person and that address, I will decline. I will unassign. Um, but I've got this other uh, Instacart order to drop off. Uh, I kind of, I, I guess you could tell, I guess it's safe to say that I, it's well documented on this particular segment of the gig geezer that I was concerned that this was the wild card um, because of the way it's set up. I took the order simply because it was something um, it was it was something that kept me from being empty-handed with this stacked Instacart order. Given that it was it's for twenty-eight dollars and twenty-six cent, I needed something else to bolster what I got going on right now, which is not much of anything. This hustle, um, as it is right now, I've got three completed deliveries, including um, this Instacart. Um, it, it, I am two hours into this hustle, and um, I've not checked on the um, the. Uh, Uber Eats uh, stacked order, but I am, you may say that I'm on pace, but I feel that given how things are going today, I really, I am, I will really need some help over, over the last um, hour and a half to hour and 45 minutes in order to accomplish the overall goal of reaching $200 today. Um, there are days like this, and I've said this already, there are days like this and what you try to do is put yourself in the best position possible. That's why multi-app multi-apping is so important. Okay, you saw the inset. That was the drop-off location for the second Instacart order. There are places in South Carolina that are even more interesting than that one. I mean, I've been met by goat, sheep, dogs, chickens, pigs. Um, yeah, that's South Carolina for you. But to get you up to speed with um, the second half hustle, we are about two hours, 15 minutes into the hustle. I'm at $73.50 plus cent. Um, the Uber Eats order paid more than the $33 that was shown. It actually paid um, $37.61. And then the um, Instacart order, which showed at $28.26, paid $28.44. And, uh, of course, there's the DoorDash order. Now, I am sitting outside of the waiter slash bite squad order at this uh, pizza place. That order is for $10, and the drop-off location is less than 10 minutes from here. And hopefully from there, I can put myself in a position to where I can catch maybe two, maybe three more orders and, and 
call this hustle and call it a day. Um, so overall now, 73 plus 108, we're at about $182 for today. But we may be at about $182 for today, but I'm always playing for the win. And so that's what we're going to do here. So I'll get back with you once we've uh, dropped off this order. All right, we've dropped off that order. You saw Now you see an inset there. There were two houses. The one in the back was the one that I was under impression where I needed to go, but it wasn't. And when I went to, when I, as I got closer to that place, I was met by the yard dog. Yeah. Or maybe it was the junkyard dog. Their junkyard dog. I don't know. But, uh, um, come to find out when I got up near the house, uh, I needed to go back up to the other house and the lady came out, to, um, and I handed her the food. But, um, yeah, like I said, I've been met by yard dogs. I've been met by sheep, goat, roosters, chickens. Yeah, you, you may be met by a little bit of everything in South Carolina. The only thing I've not been met by is Smith & Wesson. Not yet. But you never know when. <laughs> um, that said, um, that order puts me at $83 for this hustle. I've accepted a $16.61 um Uber Eats order that's going to put me right at about $100. Um, and that's just for this hustle. Um, but what I'd like to do is get one more. One more. Um, now, where I'm at, it showed Blythewood as the location. Now, Blythewood covers a lot of area as I've shared already. It covers a lot of area and it, there are some very remote areas and then there's some very nice areas of Blythewood. Now, this is the area that I often said, the black hole, when I worked the northeast sector of the Columbia metropolitan area. Black hole is because of what you see. And what happens is that it's, it's hard to stack orders when you're out of position, out this way. And so what you have to hope for is a good size order or you're in a position money-wise where you can kind of um, work your way around it. Now, um, from here, from this very point, I'm probably about seven minutes from the pickup, the Uber Eats pickup location. And then from there, I got to drive 12, 15 minutes back to where I actually picked up this uh, waiter slash bike squad order. But um, with one more order to go, I'm willing to deal with it. Um, hopefully, I'll be done all together within the next... Um, let's see here. Well, I just missed my turn, so that's not a good thing. And the road is too narrow to be um, looking for a lot of places to turn around because you never know when you're going to end up in somebody's ditch. Now, now, fortunately for me, I didn't have to go too far. I found a little turn turnaround. Um, I found a little place that I could turn around and not end up in somebody's ditch. Um... I've worked this area uh, doing Amazon Flex, and uh, I used to like coming out here because typically it was not a heavy, it was not a heavy route. It was fairly, it was moderate. Most times it was moderate, and so there weren't a lot of stops, but it was just the driving. Um, and typically once I was done, that was it. I, I rarely had to go back to the warehouse. Um, if anything, um, once I was done, then the goal really was to put myself in a position for an evening uh, block. Alrighty. Now, I know it's been a little while since I've gotten back with y'all, but um, the Wasabi Uber Eats order took a while before it was ready. Unfortunately, this the restaurant was severely understaffed and there was, there was a host who was doing everything. Uh, they had two cooks, one who was working the... Um, I guess the sushi bar and then the other person in back. So the guy who was doing the host and wait and all that, he had to do everything. So that that order took a while before it was ready. Um, while I waited for the wasabi order, I accepted an Instacart at Kroger. I accepted the, the Instacart at Kroger more so as an insurance policy, um, not so much as running up the numbers. But I am now en route to um, dropping off the Instacart order, which is actually uh, arguably about 10 minutes from my house, and I'll be done for today. 
uh, preliminary numbers, if the Uber Eats in order to pay $16.61 as it said, along with the Instacart, I had to refund one item and I had to make a couple of substitutions. Um, let's just say that both orders should pay some, somewhere in the range of $30 combined. Um, if that be the case, then I'll be at about $113, $114 for the evening hustle. And that will put me at about $208 before adding the $15 that uh, DoorDash paid as a quest, in quotes, quest. So um, the, the gig geezer, he's there. He's there. 40 days, 40 days in which he's earned, uh, 40 days in which he's worked uh, entire hustles, first and second half. 40 consecutive days of earning $200 or more. Well, I'm back at the I'm back at the Ponderosa, and um, after figuring out all the numbers, yes, the gig geezer did make $200 for the 40th consecutive day in which he has put in both the first half and second half hustle, meaning that he's put in a full day. Um, the big the big the biggest takeaways was that multi-apping proved to be very valuable today on a day in which it did not there was not the vibe of a lot of action going on not a lot of orders not a lot of quality orders but the gig user was able to catch orders at the right time some may say it was luck but you know what when you when you're out here every single day another thing that go comes into play is strategy and, and your expectations do you come out here with the expectation to meet your goals every day? And sometimes it's that drive of meeting your expectations that sometimes cause things in the cosmos to ha make things happen. I I don't say that this is an exact science. I will not say that what I'm my strategies and what I do are guaranteed. No, but if you follow what I've been doing, you can say that I'm very consistent in what I do. I don't I don't put in a I don't make a lot of big days like days over two hundred fifty dollars, but I have a lot of days between two oh two ten, maybe two twenty, and like today two thirty. But that's all I have for this segment of the gig geezer. Hit that subscribe button, give my content a thumbs up, share my content among others, and I welcome your comments in the section below. And with that, I'm in Wood Lane, and as always, may your hustle continue. Thank you for checking out this segment of the gig geezer. If you reach this point, it means that you've checked it out in its entirety and it's very much appreciated and it tells YouTube that you're very much engaged in my content. Hey, if you'd like to get in contact with me or pass on some other useful information, I can be reached at giggeezer 3.5 at gmail.com or you can check me out on Twitter at giggeezer 3.5.